says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sitteth, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law do he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season. His leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. So we're going to start off with saying, now, does anybody know what bless me? From the Hebrew word, E-H-S-H-E-R, -E -E Ishir, and it means a state of prosperity or happiness when a superior bestowed his favor on you. So your boss can bless you with a raise. Um... Uh, the, the judge at court can bless you with giving you a lighter sentence than the one you deserve. And of course, our Heavenly Father bestowed blessings upon us, his children. So can we say blessed is favor? That's, that's what I said. I said okay. blessed okay. is a state of prosperity or happiness when a superior bestow his favor, favor. on one. Yes. I get that. Heed to what is written in 1 Psalms 1 through 6 in order to have a blessed walk with the Lord. Who want a blessed walk with the Lord? Amen. 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 So let's start off with the counsel of the ungodly. Blessed is not the man that walketh in the counsel of the ungodly. What is the counsel of the ungodly? Can anyone give an answer or definition? Or what is the counsel of the ungodly? Counsel of the world. Oh, wow. What the world says. Um, right. Basically, in general, the common, yeah, the world, right? I, I put like advice from ungodly friends or right. associates, right. Uh, advice from columns, uh, advertisement ads, secular psychology, um, mm -hmm. Oprah. Dr. Phil, Dr. Oz. For, see, if you're trying to go to an ungodly, you can't go to an ungodly person and ask them for biblical advice. Right, so you can't get biblical advice from an ungodly person. So, and, and, and last but not least, Joel Osteen and his best life. Now, I know you got some. <laughs> oh, Joel. <laughs> ungodly counsel. So now, so now uh, Psalms 1b says, nor standeth in the way of sinners, so now we go from taking ungodly, un, ungodly advice to identifying with the ungodly. Somebody turn to Proverbs 4, chapter 4, verse 14 and 15. So now we're going from taking ungodly counsel to identifying with this ungodly counsel. Chapter 4. Yeah, verse 14 through 15. Would you do King James ESV? You know it. 4, 4 14, 15. Um, don't do as the wicked do, and don't follow the path of evildoers. Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it, and pass away. So what are what are some of the examples of standing in the path of sinners? According to those that that, that uh, scripture, what are some examples of standing in the path of sinners? Well, I, I got one. I put... Uh, <laughs> Look, it's hard to, to say, it's hard to hear and not. Okay, no problem, no problem. I put uh, agreeing with people for the sake of peace. When you say path of the wicked, when, when I think of path, I think of like a, a lane or a street, <coughs> a direction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when it says do not enter the direction of the wicked, which means don't even go in their direction. Right. Don't right. don't follow in the same way that they go. Well, right. That's the same that's, as I was about to say is joining in on jokes and ungodly conversation. You know, you know water cooler talk. Yeah, you know, you know you being godly and you walk into a conversation and they gossip and stuff. You're like, what? What happened? You you join in on it. You, you know, that's standing in the path of the sinners. Mm -hmm. and you know, we're not called to do that. It's easy to do it. It's real easy yeah. to do it. But I, I believe when you do do it, I believe you get an unction from the Holy Spirit that you know that's that is wrong. Right. And then when yeah. you get that unction, are you going to go with that unction or are you going to read uh, Romans 5, 1 through 1 and 2? Oh. And then somebody else go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 23 and 24. 
Uh-huh. Romans uh, uh, 5, 1 and 2. And we're going to read that one first. First Corinthians chapter She's going to read Romans 5, 2 first. First Corinthians chapter oh, I'm sorry. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 23 and 24. Okay, you said uh, Romans 5, 1, 1 and 2. Right. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into the, his grace, to this grace, in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Okay, now go back and read, uh, read verse 2 again. Through whom also we have access by faith into this grace, in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. I remember that. Now, um, so based on the scriptures that we, <clears throat> so based on these two scriptures, where should we stand? Based on these two scriptures. And the mm -hmm. answer is, I think we should stand on our faith in the word of God. That's what those two scriptures would stand. See, he said, we don't stand in the path of sinners, but right. we stand yeah. on our faith in the That's word right. of God. Um, so based on the scriptures that we, <clears throat> so based on these two scriptures, where should we stand? based on these two scriptures. And the answer is, I think we should stand on our faith in the word of God. That's what those two scriptures would stand. See, he said, we don't stand in the path of sinners, but right. we stand yeah. on our faith in the word of God. Yeah. So that's, that is in Psalms. Okay, I'm like Psalms. Okay, so 1C says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. We don't listen to the advice of the ungodly, mm -hmm. nor standeth in the way of sinners. We are to stand firm on our faith in the word of God nor sit in the seat of the scornful. So what is sitting in the seat of the scornful? We can counsel, mm -hmm. then we mull it over, mm -hmm. then we make it our very own. And that's, if I'm not mistaken, what you were just talking about. Mm -hmm. So uh, turn yeah, to- And I think also, ahead. like when I think of sit, I think of, you know, yes. get comfortable with them. Yes. Right. You know, right. you you're sitting and you're comfortable and you're right. conversing with them and you're, you're becoming a part of their chaos. Right. Yes. Right. 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 Yeah. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Turn to uh, Hebrews chapter four. Hebrew. The coffee man. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> 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 no, sir. No, sir. Four fifteen. Make a good coffee. Good coffee. Four fifteen. When you're there, go ahead and. Well, somebody go to Hebrews 4, 15, and then somebody go to James 1, <clears throat> James chapter 1, verse 13 through 15. Okay, I have, uh, four, I have Hebrews 4, 15. Okay. Go ahead, read it. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Nobody Amen. Everything that we've been tempted with, he's been tempted with, and he was without sin. Jesus. Who's at James 1, 13 through 15? Okay. I got it. When tempted, no one should say, God has tempted me, for God cannot be tempted by anyone, mm -hmm. nor does he tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when, by his own evil desire, he is dragged away in his height. Then, after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. Amen. Now, now look, now look at that progression in the book of James, chapter 1, 13 through 15. It's, it's just like the progression of Psalms 1. What is the difference between James 1, 13 and 15 and Psalms? It comes from our own desire, which entice us and drag us away. These desires give birth to sinful action. And when sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. So the difference is in Psalms 1, the, 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 it's, it's the outside source that's tempting you. But James 1, 13 through 15 is the inside source that is tempting you. And uh, what is that inside source that tempts you? The flesh. The flesh. Amen. Amen. We listen. Here it is. We listen to the flesh. We maul it over. Then we adopt the attitude of the flesh. And then we become one with the flesh. See, our biggest, our biggest uh, enemy is not a cosmological being called the devil. Our biggest enemy is the flesh. But we always give, we always give our, our, we always, 
Oh, the devil, no, it's your flesh. That's what Jesus came. Your flesh is what you need to destroy. Jesus said you must deny yourself. Deny your flesh is your biggest adversary. That's what Satan devil means, adversary. And your flesh is your biggest adversary. That's right. So now we're going to go down to Psalms uh, chapter, verse 2. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law do he meditate day and night. Now, delight in Hebrews means chifet, C-H-E-P-H-E-T-S, chifet. And it means pleasure, mm -hmm. desire, affair. Now, how many take pleasure in reading the word of God? Go to church seven days a week. Yeah. But if you're not having an affair with the word of God, it's all for naught. So um, with that, we're going to go to... It says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law do he meditate day and night. So his delight is in the word of God. Somebody go to Psalms 40, chapter 8. And then I'm going to go to Psalm 40, chapter 8. Psalms 119, verse, 40, one, verse 47. Chapter 40, mm -hmm. verse 8 is, I delight to do your will. Oh my God, and your law is within my heart. That's it. That's eight. Yeah, that's okay, eight. okay. Anybody got one, 119, 47 and 48? If not, I got it. I got it. Oh, go ahead. You said 47, 48. Right. And I will delight myself in thy commandments which I have loved. My hands also will, I will lift up unto thy commandments which I have loved and will meditate. The word of God. I don't. I don't know. If David wrote this song. Let me go back to the beginning of it. Oh, uh, it got different people names above it. But they, they, your, your, your delight should be in the word of God. Your delight shouldn't be in Netflix and and sports and worldly affair. But your delight as a Christian should be in the word of God. Now we go to meditate on the word of God. Meditate. All right. Somebody go to Joshua one eight. And I'm gonna do Psalms one nineteen. 97, 98, 1, 8, but I'm going to read Psalms 119, 97, and 98 first, and we're talking about meditate on the word of God, it says, oh how I love your instructions, I think about them all day long, your commands make me wiser than my enemies, for they are my constant guide, and who got Joshua 1, 8? Prosperous. Day and night. Day and night. Day and night. And, and, and I like this right here. And I didn't even have this on here. But when I just saw it in verse 98, it says, your commands make me wiser than my enemy. So it's coming up too. So when you get the word of God in you, it makes you wiser than your enemy. And who I said your biggest enemy was? Your flesh. Your flesh. So when you get that word of God in you, it began to crucify that flesh that wants to rise up against you. Amen. But one thing about it, but one thing about it, you got to continue to do it. Day and night. Because that's how the mind works. If you continue to get it in your mind. Exactly. It'll come like clockwork. Exactly. There. So in the Old Testament, what were, what were blessings in the Old Testament? The blessings in the Old Testament were physical and material blessings. But under the new and better covenant, blessing includes the true blessings of God under the new covenant is getting victory over your sin and walking in holiness. Now it does include some physical and material blessings, but the biggest focus is getting victory over sin, crucifying that flesh and walking in holiness. And we find that somebody go to, uh, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good work. See, ungodly people can't give you godly advice. Amen? Amen. 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 So, um, we get the word of God in us, not for head knowledge. Here come, Pastor. Not for head knowledge, but so that what? Our mind will be transformed. See, when like verse 12 through 15 says, but the godly 
will flourish like palm trees and grow strong like the cedar of Lebanon, for they are transplanted to the Lord's own house. Um, they flourish in the courts of our God. Even in the old age, they will still produce fruit. They will remain vital and green. They will declare the Lord is just. He is my rock and there is no evil in him. And Jeremiah chapter 17. I'm tired of telling anybody to go to Jeremiah chapter 17. So I'm going to go real quick. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 7 through 8 says, But blessed are those who trust in the Lord and made the Lord their hope and confidence. They are like trees planted along a riverbank with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruit. So when you are planted in the word of God, when you planted in the word of God, no matter what comes your way, huh? Deep. Yeah, yeah, you got to be firmly planted in the word of God. That's what I say, your roots deep, firmly planted in the word of God. God in you, the hope of glory, the word of God in you, you in the word of God, that's what you got to be deep. And then no matter what comes up against you, you will remain grounded. Now, as the tree, wherever you are going through, as as now as the tree, whatever you are going through and how you decide to walk in that situation, will bear fruit. You see where it says, uh, Psalms, go back to Psalms. It says, with bear fruit, or its leaves will not wither. Anybody stayed on Psalms? Okay, yeah, yeah. Psalms 1, 1. Okay, this one you need a split screen. Mm -hmm. Okay, here it is. Um, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in due season. That tree is going to bring forth his fruit in his season. No matter what the season is, he's going to bring forth that fruit. His leaf also shall not wither. Whatsoever he do shall prosper. So what kind of fruit is a tree that is planted by the river that's grounded in the word of God is going to bring forth? What kind of fruit? Wake up, queen. The word of God. Right, the word of God, right? But what kind of fruit, though? Healthy fruit. Healthy fruit. All right, turn to Galatians chapter 5. Let's go to Galatians. The fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit. Thank you. Galatians chapter 5, yep. verse 21 and 23. When you're when you're firmly planted in the in the ground, the word of God, when you firmly are planted by the river, which is Jesus is that river that's flowing, when you firmly planted by it, in that season, whatever season you are going through is going to bear fruit. And here goes the fruit of the Spirit. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. But as a, uh, when you're not planted in the Word of God, you, you, you say you're a Christian, but you're not planted in the Word of God. You're not firmly planted in the Word of God. The tree that you as that tree is going to bear that fruit that is not firmly planted in the word of God. And what fruit are they going to bear? The works of the flesh are manifested, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, decisions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, reveling, and such like. So those are the fruits that you're going to bear if you're not grounded in the word of God. That, those are the fruits that you, you, you're going to bear. So going back to Psalms 156, it says, uh, where we at? The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the winds blow away. Anybody know what chaff is? Like weep over here. Dry. Dead. Yeah, dry branches. Uh, maybe. Kind of like well, chaff is a material. Well, yeah, chaff is a material consisting of seed covering and small pieces of stem or leaves that has been separated from the seed, then blown away by the wind aimlessly and without purpose. 
and that is the state of the ungodly. That's the state of the ungodly right now. They're just out there living, just blowing away. Wherever the wind blows, they go. You know, it's sad. It's really sad. They just, they, they have no existence. They, they live, but they're alive, but they're, they're spiritually dead. And that's the state of the ungodly. They're like the chaff, blowing about wind, blowing about with the, with the uh, wind. Somebody go to Psalms 35, verse 5. And somebody go to Job 21, 17 through 18. Mm -hmm. Psalms 35 verse 5. Somebody go to Job 21 start of one day. And what is that? Everybody's going to be a part of this destiny. What is that? Can anybody tell me? Eternity. But where is everybody going to be a part of? The judgment day. Judgment, right. judgment day. Yeah, everybody yeah. Everybody's going to be judged. That's true. So anybody stayed on Psalms? Somebody read Psalms 1 5. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Okay, stop. Now, somebody read Matthew chapter 25, verse 31 and 33. Oh, Matthew chapter 25, verse 31 through 33. That's it? That's 31, 32. You want 33 too? Yeah, all the way to 33. 33. And he shall set, set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left hand. Right. On that day of judgment, <laughs> the sinners will not be seated with the righteous. The one's going to be on the left hand, and one is going to be on the right hand. Now, somebody read Psalms 1 through 6. Psalms 1? I mean, 1 6, I'm sorry. What she sat in here. She read six. She okay, but we I'm not on the For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly God. shall Period. perish. The ungodly. The ungodly. Mm. Psalms 37 18 said, The Lord knows the day of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. Nahum, one of my favorite scriptures, verse 1 through 7 says, The Lord is good. In the day of trouble, the Lord is good and a stronghold in the day of trouble. Guess what? He knows those that put their trust in him. See, it's a million people out here that's claiming God. But God knows those that truly shall put their trust in him. And John verse t chapter 10. Let's go to John chapter 10 together. John chapter 10. The Lord knows those. He knows them. He knows. Chapter 10. Yeah. Verse. Uh, it's verse 14, mm -hmm. and then you jump down to 27 and 28. So read um, verse 14. Uh, hey, read it, Brother Pastor. I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and I am known of mine. And then go down to 27, 28. 27, 28. 27, 28. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Verse 28. And I shall give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish, neither shall um, any man pluck them out of my hand. So what this Psalms 1-6 says, the Lord knows the way of the righteous. Mm -hmm. And did that just not answer those? Mm -hmm. But the ungodly will perish. Somebody read Matthew's Charlie will perish. God knows the so God knows the way of the righteous, and he knows the way of the unrighteous. Mm -hmm. The righteous shall inherit eternal life, mm -hmm. and the ungodly shall perish. Four questions, four, one, two, three, four, five quick questions to, to think about. Um, now, four quick questions. Are you firmly rooted in the word of God? Ephesians 3, 17. Mm -hmm. Do you meditate on it? Joshua 1, 8. Do you manifest the fruit of the spirit? Uh, Galatians 5, 23, 24. And how will you stand on the day of judgment? And that is Psalms 5. Uh, Psalms chapter 1, verse
verse 1 through 6. Amen.